have a signal. All right, well, good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Does she have you set up to share a screen? Uh, let's see. I don't know. Oh, is that it? Yeah. I think. Double two time. Oh, oh good. Right. I'm not experienced as this. See, so y'all bear with me. Mm -hmm. First of all, I want to ask and folks in TV land can't see, but. Oh, you know, sure. And I need to turn it up because. Okay. Yeah. All right, Alexandra. Gold, can you hear us? Yes. Okay, thank you. Right. What do y'all think about these business cards? Anybody in TV lands? Is there a burning question that you all have? Exactly. Right. Exactly right. 
Exactly right. All right. So, um, so mortgage lenders fall into three different categories. Yes. Well, and one more thing that's yes. really, really important, yes. right? So, it, when everybody here, the Fed's going to raise the rates. They think when the Fed raised the rates, that the mortgage rates raised in the same proportion. So, what does that mean to us? So we say, okay, the Fed's raising the rate on their products. How does it affect mortgages? Gotcha. gotcha. So you know, I've that, got a slide for that. It's not included. Okay, so but I have a perfect slide. Lawrence, Lawrence Young, I might cover that in a team meeting. I think I did cover that in a team meeting, but we can do it again. Yeah, do it again because okay. most, most of our agents in you. Okay. Yeah. So I'll cover that. Great. All right. So um, there's three different types of mortgage lenders there's banks, right? Truist, Regions, all the folks where you keep your checking accounts. And um, there's, uh, yeah, they're, they're governed by the FDIC and, and uh, the Office of the Comptroller. So they're governed by, for the most part, federal government. And their focus is um, where they really make money or on fees on checking and savings accounts. And, getting your savings and then making money off of your savings. So they're interested in, in depository accounts. They're interested in, uh, uh, you know, car loans and commercial loans and, you know, th those, kind of, those kind of things. Um, I worked for a bank, I worked for SunTrust Mortgage for five years and um, we were always do this, even though we were a money maker for the bank and we brought people in, that didn't have accounts at SunTrust, we would bring them into SunTrust and be able to open up accounts, you know, which had a value to the bank. The bank looked at it as like a redhead stepchild. I mean, they just, you know. Um, you work with Mike Fitzmaier? I'm sorry. Do you, do you work with Mike Fitzmaier? Yeah, you know, we, we were in different groups, but yeah, yeah. So, um, so that's banks. And then there's, at the opposite end of the spectrum is brokers. And brokers are just middlemen. Um, and um, you know they go between the, the bank and the and, and 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 the customer, and they can't approve a loan, they can't um, deny a loan. They are just middlemen, so they they basically get um, you know with banks underwriting, processing, closing, funding, everything done in house. With brokers, they don't do anything, any of that. They just collect information and send it to a wholesale lender. And then there's mortgage banks. And so mortgage banks are, um, uh, we have in-house underwriting, processing, closing, funding, all of that is covered inside, you know, at Supreme Lending, right? And then, um, uh, we, after the loan closes, then we will sell the investment behind that loan to Fannie Mae or Freddie Mac or FHA or we'll, we'll sell it, you know, and, and we may transfer the servicing or we may continue to keep the servicing. So, and that and that that can happen with, with anybody. So, but we don't have depository accounts. We don't have, um, uh, and so we're governed by state agencies. We're governed by the Georgia Department for Georgia, we're governed by the Georgia Department of Banking and Finance, but there's a different Department of Banking and Finance in every state. And so that's how um, Supreme Lending, and that's how Silverton is, is organized also. So basically you're not encumbered by the federal red tape, but you're also not encumbered, but you are regulated, but you're and actually we're, we're regulated pretty tightly in terms of we have to be licensed in every state. Um, but but you're, you, you've got more control over your process because you, you know, management doesn't care about other things like checking accounts and savings accounts and commercial loans. And those kind of things. All we care about are mortgages. Any, any questions on that? So one thing to think about if you're, if you're writing a financing contingency and your customer is working with a broker, you need to know who the wholesale lender is. Okay, because it's not the broker. Um, so, and, and an approval letter or a uh, denial letter needs to come from the lender, not the broker, because the broker doesn't have that, that capability. So, it's, it's 
Supreme Landing Southeast Region, headquartered in um, Alpharetta that covers North Carolina, South Carolina, Georgia, and Florida. There is a Supreme Lending branch that is in Fayetteville that um, is not part of the Southeast region. So they're, they're, they're in a different group if you ever run into them. It's a picture of our conference room, one of our conference rooms. Um, this is our underwriting manager, Jetta Wilson. So yeah, she is a real person. Jetta and I have worked together for 21 years. Um, we, other than the five years I was at SunTrust, but before that and after that. Um, so we're, we're um, you know, when you work with, I mean, she calls me when she's on vacation, you know, I mean, she, when you, when you work with her, of course, I also don't abuse her time either, but when you work with somebody that long, um, and of course, that's our team here um, in the, in the, at Keller Williams, myself, Camilo, and Tim, and um, our vision is to become the best mortgage banking company in America. Now, that's not the biggest mortgage banking company in America, right? We just want to be the best. And how do we measure that? Well, we measure that by associate satisfaction, customer satisfaction, uh, growth, and market share. And as long as we're, we don't care about refinance market share, we just we're focused on purchase, right? That's just realtors are our focus. That's just our business model. Our mission, and this is really what drives our philosophy, is to serve others before self. So, yeah, that's why my process will work till nine, ten o'clock at night, because she knows she's got to get loans done so we can close on time and fund on time. Here's a um, message from about a personal and professional best program from Pat uh, Flood, who's our regional operating partner. Does this have sound? Mm -hmm. Yes. Awesome. Hi, I'm Pat Flood, Regional Operating Partner for Supreme Lending Southeast. You've arrived at my favorite part of the website. I live by a personal mission to leave all I come in contact with better than I found them. With that mission, I created the Supreme <sighs> and Professional Best Program. People with written goals are twice as likely to achieve them. So, our program helps guide our participants through goal setting in writing in the six areas of life that we all share. Family and relationships, health and fitness, personal finance, fun and recreation, faith and community service, and business growth. However, creating goals is only the first step. So, we created the best GPS portal to give you a practical tool to document your goals and to create a plan to achieve them with realistic milestones. Then each month we conduct a personal and professional best live stream to serve as a voice of accountability to help you make progress to your preferred destinations. We bring incredible voices of wisdom that offer expert advice and key insights to help you become your best. Each month, we carve out an hour of time to gather together and recommit ourselves to the promises we've made to ourselves and others and equip ourselves with the tools and resources to make those promises a reality. Whether you're an associate, a realtor partner, a family member, or a new friend, you are officially invited to join us on our journey to becoming our personal and professional best. Our best is waiting. We look forward to meeting you there. The interview. Exciting. Yeah. 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 I watched that interview. Another help out. He did. He didn't interview Pat Dye. Here's my thing with you. Okay. Because I want to. Yes, he was very incredible. And I didn't know her from the Oh, we just have a football. We're <laughs> so, okay. so, yeah. well, I got to tell you, that's, yeah. that was a great interview. So, yeah, it, you know, our, our goal is to bring value. You know, we, we need to improve ourselves. I mean, the whole idea is okay, let's be our best. Who in here doesn't want to be their best? 
right? And Nobody. Is everybody, does everybody like to be their best every day? Of right? course. So, I mean, that's that's a line. Okay, what do we need to do so we do that? Um, we've had uh, Dr. <coughs> Dr. King, uh, and Nick Saban, Gabby Douglas, uh, Herschel Walker. Just, he goes on and on this month. Um, on Thursday, we have um, Andy Stanley. He's talking about uh, not not in it to win it. So not, you know, which relationships are more important than trying to win an argument, right? And, um, and then uh, every Friday, we have Credit Essentials for Home Buyers. So we hired this lady a couple of years ago, um, Lisa Myers, worked with her for years. So she's been in the credit industry um, Equifax and um, Experian um, and some other companies for um, 25 years. And she is just a master of figuring out credit reports and how to help somebody improve their credit score. We have some automated tools like a lot of people do, which, but we don't, but she's got a special talent for it. So we hired her every Friday at one o'clock. We have a, a Zoom meeting for people that are just curious about what credit is and Improving their credit. And then we'll do, once we have a credit report, she'll do um, a personalized analysis on to, to help improve scores. And that's, you know, that could be going from a 540 to a 640. That could be going from a 760 to an 800, which might save somebody $20,000 and, you know, four or $5,000 in, in, if they're doing a jumbo line. You know, so. It it, it, it it fits all. Yes. Um, how do I refer someone that wants to work on their credit? Credit. Uh, so supremebest.com slash credit essentials. And that's where they can register. Supremebest.com slash credit essentials. And then we, we want to bring value to you all as, as a realtor partner. So we have continuing education classes. We offer one every month. Um, this is Ty Anderson. He's our um, marketing director. Ty was um, managing member of the band Third Day, won four Grammy, Award, uh, four Grammy Awards. Um, got tired of traveling and being on the road and uh, came to work for us. Um, and he is phenomenal. He teaches. A couple of different classes, uh, rock, uh, market like a rock star, and then market like a rock star social media. Um, and they're on the uh, this coming over on August second. We have at one o'clock. We've got um, uh, a, a, a appraiser's guide to CMA. So it's a, a, a CD course on appraisals. But we offer one every every month. Usually, usually that first or second week of the month. Is it on my calendar? It should be. It's in a contemporary. Is it on? So it'd be on the Is it a lunch around? It's no, it's a CD class. It's via the same. Oh, the Zoom. Okay. Um, so lots of times when, when folks start thinking about um, buying a home or getting a mortgage, they're like, okay, well, I'm going to shop around for rates. So you look at it like I can buy a car at any dealership. So let me just call around and see. Where I can get the cheapest car, the cheapest, you know, and buy a, to a Toyota. A Toyota is a Toyota, regardless of the of the dealership, right? Um, that's not the case with mortgages. It's not like shopping for a car. It's more like shopping for a car mechanic, because it's really the, the service is actually more important than the price that you get. Um, you know, I mean, you can. You pay a low cost for a mechanic, but if they don't fix your car, you're going to pay it over and over again if they don't fix it adequately, right? Um, Jeff, can you yes. make sure they can hear you? Can you all hear me? Hey, Amy? Yes. Okay, good. Can y'all hear? I just want to make sure y'all can hear. Yes. Great. So, and, and a lot of buyers think that, okay, all apples are the same, right? It's just all lenders are the same. It doesn't, it doesn't really matter. Well, there's a lot of different kinds of uh, lenders, just like there's a lot of different kinds of apples. And even, 
you know, the night and day differences, right? Not even off in the same in the same food group, right? There's there's um, and so when you start comparing them, um, the biggest difference, fundamental difference, is the difference between a relationship and a transaction. Do they look at it as a relationship or do they look at it as a transaction? Um, you know, and, and if you think about low cost lenders like better.com, they're famous for being low, low cost. Um, they just laid off, they, they did a Zoom call where they laid off, the, the president of the company got 750 people on a call and he said, okay, on a Zoom call, and said, go and go on. Mm -hmm. I mean, it, it's one of my customers is an underwriter with better.com and she didn't trust her company to take care of her loan internally. We, we did it. She came to us for it. So, um, uh, and she was interested in a, in a relationship, not a transaction. The priority triangle, you can, there's, there's really, it's made up of three things, service, speed, and price, right? You can't have all three. It's, it's impossible to have all three. You can either get really good service, um, and, and fast speed, you can get, maybe you can get low price and good service, or you can get low price and fast, but you can't get good service. Does that make sense? So we offer three different kinds of services, good, cheap, or fast, but you can only pick two. So good and cheap won't be fast, fast and good won't be cheap, and cheap and fast won't be good. Um, Seth Gunn, who's an author, New York Times bestselling author that we had in our personal professional best, said the problem with racing to the bottom is that you might win. So if you focus on low price and think about it in your industry, how much commission do you all charge on a listing, right? 6%? Mm -hmm. well, you know, some people charge seven. Um, the, the, you know, if you're going to race it, do you really want to cut it to four? If you cut it to four, or you, you know, because you got to pay the other part, maybe you're paying, you know, the, the buyer's agent two and you're taking two. Is that is that going to enable you to deliver the best service? You know, and okay, well, what if your competitor does it with three and a half? Then what are they going to do, right? And it, it, just, it just keeps going um, down to down. Instead, our goal is to race to the top. So, speed and service is what we focus on. Um, I put that into context and, and um, in, in, in the mortgage industry, the standard industry process is the loan officer gets the contract, gathers all the documents, puts everything together to file, um, gives the processor, processor works on the file, does a verification of employment, does you know, a number of other things, thinks they have to see what documents they think might be missing, get the appraisal, get the title, and then send it to underwriting. So underwriting doesn't get it for a week or two or three, right? Depending on the bank. And maybe the underwriter doesn't approve it. So then you find out the week before closing that the loan's not approved. Um, and the processor is really kind of doing a guessing game for the underwriter at, at that point. So what Supreme did differently um, is put underwriting first. So is that is that more costly for us? Yes. But the idea is that you get a loan underwritten, you get an underwriting decision up front. The processor just loves on the client, right? The processor's happy because uh, she knows what she she or he knows what they have to deal with. And then you get underwriting. So we get all the conditions and then underwriting gets a clear close. And so we're we're actually able, because of this, we're actually able to increase customer satisfaction um, and have a 99% close on time, um, uh, right, 99.1% close on time year to day. That, you know, obviously it's not 100%, but it's, it's pretty close. The industry average is about 75%, about 25% failure for, for financing. Um, we can close in as little as eight business days. And um, customer satisfaction is uh, either sat people said they were satisfied or very satisfied 98.15% of the time. Our Supreme Recipe Service is where a loan is maybe you're listing, maybe the buyer won't look at a different lender. That's where we call in the recipe service. We can 
puts in able because the pros and installer is eight business days. Um, we also, and I mentioned associate satisfaction. So we've been, we've won best places to work by the Atlanta Business Chronicle and the Atlanta Journal Constitution for companies our size um, uh, nine, uh, nine times um, uh, since I think we started applying in 2015. So those are, you know, between those two publications, best places to work. And that's for any company, you know, any industry. There's about 250,000 companies in Metro Atlanta. So, you know, in, in, um, not just the finance industry, not just the mortgage industry, but any company. So, um, back to mortgage financing. And this is, these are the kind of loan programs that, that we provide conventional FHA, VA, USDA, we're going to cover that, uh, down payment assistance programs. Uh, renovation loans, jumbo construction perm, and non qualified mortgages. I'm not going to touch on uh, and answer questions on it, but those it, it's just almost just like, okay, where do I draw the line, right? So um, I'll cover the, cover the first ones. Um, down payment requirements. So for primary residents, your minimum down payment if you're a first time home buyer for a conventional loan is 3%. So a lot of people think a lot of People that haven't bought homes think, oh, I've got to save up 20%. I mean, I, I can't tell you how many times I've heard that. I'm like, no, you, you don't. You can, you know, with 3% down, the interest rate's going to be a little bit higher than with 5% down. But uh, and the mortgage insurance is going to be a little bit higher. Um, with conventional loans, uh, if, if this is not your first home, if you've owned a home in the last three years, then uh, the minimum down payment is 5%. Uh, for second homes, the minimum down payment is 10%. And for investment properties, the minimum down payment is now 15%. And I'll be honest with you, the points and costs with 15% down on an investment property and or 10% down on a second home is a lot higher. It almost makes it cost prohibitive. Yes. Okay. So let's say I'm buying a second home in. Where do we be? We're in East Sarasota. Let's no, no, no. Let's stay closer because I want to know how they determine whether or not I'm really buying a second home as opposed to me turning it into an investment property. So let's say, I say, I want to buy a second home down in Jonesboro. Yeah. It's a, What's the requirements? How much time do I have to spend in the house for it to be considered a second home and not an investment property? If I just wanted to put ten percent down on something that I'm gonna, let's say Airbnb, uh, yeah, it yeah, it, you know, so a lot of people do that. It, you know, I'll, I'll go ahead and answer your question. I'll throw it in with more, more detail. So um, the answer is seventy-five miles away. Typically, so second homes seven, seventy-five. Seventy-five. Yeah, 75 but typically, miles. typically more important than that is that it's you know it needs to be in a resort area. So say. So, you know, okay. or, or, or some, you know, if somebody lived in California and wanted to and travel here to Atlanta to see family all the time, they could buy a second home yes. here, yes. right? So then that kind of, would kind of make sense. Um, you know, um, if you buy a, a home at Lake Lanier, that's not, that's not 75 miles away, but it was, but, but yeah, that makes sense that it would be a second home. And it's on the lake. Because it's on the way. Okay. Right. All right. So the other, the other, yes, you had a question. Oh, about it. So the other thing about yes. second homes is that um, historically, second home interest rates used to be the same as primary home interest rates. You know, the low rates that you hear about, even though they've gone up, it's still still lower than investment properties. So starting in March, the Federal Housing and Finance Administration changed that. That's, a, that's the department that controls Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac, and they implemented points and fees to make second homes more like investment properties. Because they were thinking, you know, our goal is to really provide financing for, um, you know, uh, um, medium, medium income and lower to, to, to medium income folks to buy the property that they feel like that's their charter. Um, yeah, they're providing financing for second homes and investment properties. 
but they 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 felt like also second home people that buy second homes were turning them into Airbnb. And, you know how much of them are really second homes, so they added they added they basically made it the same cost as an investment property. One of the benefits of buying it as a second home is that you can get um, three percent of the purchase price towards your closing cost. One of the or um, uh, and um, one of the limitations of of uh, investment properties is that that's limited to two percent. So there is an advantage for second homes there. Of course, like I said, you can put a smaller down payment. The um, uh, investment properties. One of the benefit of buying an investment property is that in, um, you can count the market rent, seventy five percent of the market rent towards your towards your um, uh, monthly payment. So it helps you qualify. Um, so there's, there's, there's pluses and minuses to, to go and use those. So if you have some someone is moving from, let's just say California here, and they want to purchase the, so the moving, they want to go ahead and just purchase the home while they're still working out there, and they want to find them the one transition, mm -hmm. how much are they putting down? They can buy that as a second home. Okay. The terms of it, they can qualify them. And, and they could put as low as 10% down. What if it's the first purchase? Yeah, so, so your primary residence, that's a great question. Your primary residence is, is where you work. Mm -hmm. okay. Even if you even if you rent the home that you live in, mm -hmm. that's still your primary residence. So the home here would be a second home. Okay, so, hmm, so she's renting out there and she's gonna buy for the first time here. Um, when she's come, so coming out here, she's also have to put down 10% because she doesn't have a job down here yet. Correct. Okay. If we're going to use the income in California to qualify. Okay. It's a great question. Yeah. yeah. She's, she said when she comes down, she's going to go into the ability side note. So I'm thinking, I don't know if that's the ability. So we count that as income. Okay. I wasn't sure about that. Yeah. Yes, yeah, so we count that as income. So uh, minimum credit score requirements for uh, conventional financing, 620, okay? Mm -hmm. It's hard to get a, get an approval with the 620, um, mm -hmm. but technically that's the minimum, but it's, it's just, you know, it's hard to, hard to get an approval with that. Um, qualifying after a short sale or deed and move where somebody gives up their um, deed in lieu of foreclosure, they have to wait, uh, at least four years for a primary residence. Qualifying after a foreclosure is seven years. So doing a short sale or deep in lieu is better than waiting to just waiting to get a foreclosure. Qualifying after a bankruptcy is it's chapter seven, it's four years from discharge, and it's chapter 13, it's two years from discharge. Qualifying uh, after a bankruptcy, so if, they, if there was a mortgage involved in the bankruptcy, then it's seven years. Foreclosure. So that's conventional. Any other questions about conventional financing? I'm flipping through these. Any questions in uh, TV land? Um, FHA financing is <coughs> property residence only. Um, second homes and investment properties are not permitted. Uh, can you repeat the previous slide, please? Sure. So qualifying after bankruptcy uh, for conventional financing, uh, if they filed Chapter 7, is four years from discharge. If they filed Chapter 13, it's two years from discharge. Now remember, Chapter 13 doesn't get discharged until they pay it back, right? So, so it, it could be, you know, five years and took them three years to pay off the debt, then they may have to wait five years since they filed. Uh, qualifying after bankruptcy with a mortgage is seven years. Is that what you wanted to cover? Yeah, thank you. You bet.
So FHA financing minimum down payment is three and a half percent. Second homes and investment properties are not permitted. Um, you think about it, if you have a 620 credit score, FHA financing, three and a half percent down payment, uh, we can go up to a 57% debt to income ratio. And what is, what is a debt to income ratio? That's where you, you take um, all the minimum payments on your credit report and you add in the, with the housing expenses, including HOA fees or anything like that, and then divide that by your gross monthly income. So with FHA, depending on credit, we may be able to get an approval to go up to 57%. Now, a lot of lenders will have that we don't go above 50 or we don't go above 55 or we don't go above 43 or what have you. They'll have ceilings in there. Um, and if your credit score is between 580 and 619, you can still get a loan with the 3.5% down payment, but your debt to income ratio can't go above 45%. So it's a little bit strict because of the credit scores. And we're going to have to get a rental history. So we have to have 12 months of either canceled checks um, or, or you know, rent payment history. And obviously, there can't be any late in there in the last 12 months. And there's other limitations. Uh, FHA, now this is important for when you're filling out the, uh, the um, uh, loan contingency, the FHA loan contingency. Uh, FHA has a monthly in, uh, mortgage insurance premium and also an upfront premium is 1.75. You put that in, and that is almost always financed onto the loan. Um, the monthly premium, if you're putting 5% down, if you're doing an FHA loan and you're putting 5% down or more, that monthly uh, premium is discounted a little bit. If they're putting 10% down, then the, the FHA monthly premium will fall off after 11 years. Hold on one second right there. <laughs> Are you sure it's not there? Whether it's 20% down? No. Mm -hmm. Conventional works that way. Sure. Conventional works that way. But FHA, FHA does. Okay. Sorry, 20% deal. Yeah. Yeah. Conventional. I mean, I, I had a customer that that needed to go to FHA because of credit issues, right. they were putting 50% down. And we couldn't get approval with conventional, but we got approval with, with FHA. Um, and and they, um, they had to pay mortgage insurance for the first 11 years. So explain that. So if they put 10% down, the PMI drops off? After 11 years. After 11 years. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, qualifying after a short sale of deed of legal closure is three years. So, it's a little bit different than traditional. Qualifying after a bankruptcy, Chapter 7 and Chapter 13, um, two years from a Chapter 7, one year from a Chapter from the Chapter. So, if somebody's in a Chapter 13 making payments and they've made the last 12 months worth of payments on time, and we can document that, then, um, you know, with the, with the trustee. And they get trustee approval, then they even though they're still in the bankruptcy, they can buy a house. Wow. Uh, so the VA financing um, primary residence, the minimum credit score is 600. So it's you know it's more lenient than, of course, a zero minimum down payment. Um, VA is more lenient than than conventional. Uh, there's no PMI. Uh, if um, they have to have minimum time in service and have an honorable discharge. So if somebody that's been in the reserves, unless they've been in combat, they may or may not qualify depending on how long they've been in the reserves. Uh, qualifying after a short sale, so two years after uh, deed in lieu of foreclosure. Um, and uh, if they follow Chapter 7, two years. So you can see that the qualifying requirements are, are even in some cases easier than, um, than FHA. Oh, can um, FHA 
What's the maximum loan amount? Uh, for for a single for a uh, single family, uh, you know, for one unit property is um, four seventy one seven fifty. That's the maximum. That's the maximum loan amount. Um, now the FHA mortgage insurance premium gets added onto that. Of course, your down payment would get added onto that. So if they were if they had twenty nine thousand dollars to put down. They can buy a five hundred thousand dollar house and go that way. Oh, okay. All right. And so you said uh, single family home. Can you do an FHA mortgage with um, mortgages? Yes. So okay. and that and the loan, minimum loan amount goes up for you know whether it's two units or three units or four units. Um, and, and I I do a lot of FHA loans on duplexes because I I tell you what if I was you know, first time home buyer, I would search high and low for a duplex and buy, you know, buy get it with an FHA loan. I mean, that's because that's that's just, I mean, that's just a money maker. You know, you, you get somebody. I mean, it's it's almost as good as you know, if you if you know you got two roommates moving in and you got your rent covered, that's okay too. But you know, duplex is a, is a great way to go. We do renovation loans on them, you know, so if they buy a duplex that needs repair, do that. Um, but you buy, cannot do FHA for investments. Right? Not for investment. Not for no, investment. but you can do conventional for, for Yeah. So if you're buying a duplex and you're doing a FHA, is it still three and a half percent? It is. What if it's a quad? It's still three and a half. Wow. Now for a three unit it's or four unit one. For a three unit or four unit qualifying for FHA is really tricky. You know, I know we're getting down the weeds here, yes, but you have to uh, what the appraiser has to do is see what the market rents are going to be on say, all three units or all four units, and we have to count seventy five percent of that, and so the PITI can't be more than that, even though they have the income to cover it, the, their payment, including taxes and insurance, can't be more than that. Okay. So it's a, it's a little bit tricky. Um, one cool thing about VA financing is that the seller can pay all the closing costs. I mean, all of them. Um, they're limited to 4% for collections and or debts, discount points, purchase property included in the sale of the VA. Thank you. Um, so I have a question on the VA. Yeah. Um, because I just had that come up. How many times, let me make sure I'm asking this question correctly. How many times can you use your um, VA eligibility? You can use it multiple times. You just, um, uh, so, you know, you have eligibility, um, think about it for 647,000. Right, and so you, so say you're totally eligible, and say you buy a two hundred thousand dollar house. Well, now you only have eligibility for um, uh, four hundred forty-seven thousand, unless you sell that house. And then if you sell that house, then you go back to the six forty-seven. That's if the calculation is different than that, but that's roughly that's roughly it. That's a great question. Yes. Uh, so I have a follow-up question with that. So let's say I use your example and I. Bought my house for two fifty, mm -hmm. right? And now I want to rent that house out because it's been five years later, and I want to buy a new home. Mm -hmm. So can I still do that and then use the balance to buy my new home? Mm -hmm. All right. Okay, that's the same question I have. So yeah. you qualify them for a certain amount, five hundred, for instance, and then they have a house. Well, I'm using now like 150, mm -hmm. and they want to keep that and rent it out and buy another one. Mm -hmm. So they'll still have that original um, amount qualified for, and they can still use it for the next right. House. Right. So, so if it's 500, so that would give them 350 that they can use for it. So if the house is 500, they would need to put 150 down. So in that case, it might make sense for them to go conventional. Mm -hmm. It just depends. Mm -hmm. I have a question. So yes. let's just say you get a duplex um, financing. How long do you have to stay within the home before you rent out the other side of the system? 
But you can run out the other side, right? right. right. I mean, I'm like, sorry, your side and your side. Saying, yeah, without you know, your yeah, partner. At a closing, you'll sign a form that says you uh, plan to live there for 12 months. Okay. 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 That's and that's, that's just in general, what is a duplex or single family? Yeah. Okay. And that's with FHA and conventional? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Buying the okay. Um, there's no funding fee for better, veterans with service connected disabilities. So that's really nice. Um, and VA finance is available for spouses of veterans who died from a service connected disability. The USDA. Yes. I knew you were going to ask that question. Yes. So, minimum credit score is 640. There are some exceptions. I've never gotten one. I've gotten a 620. Um, down payment, none. Zero down. And you can even roll in some closing costs. So, it's a pretty, it's a pretty cool loan. Um, there is property and income eligibility requirements. Yes. What is USDA? Oh, United States Department of Agriculture. So that's also referred to as a rural development fund. Rural. Okay. So how do you find the USDA? Yeah. Yeah. That's great question. Um, you know, a lot of times, uh, uh, USDA has to do. It's, it's a little bit more difficult to qualify. You know, this is. This is probably a three to four week close, and so like FHA and conventional, we can close in, in two weeks. Um, all right. When this was put together, those are the areas, the areas in beige or yellow, whatever you call it, were not USDA eligible. So you see, you get it's on the other side of Dallas, right? Mm -hmm. um, Stockbridge. You know, maybe in, out in social circle. You know, if you, you want to go out there, uh, up here in Daresville, Canton is not eligible. Latham Town is not eligible. Maybe Silver City. So you, City, yes. Um, and that's valid now on this map. Yeah. Uh, it's, this isn't up to date. This, you know, so my guess would be Stockbridge might not be USDA. Um, Covington is barely. You know, so, so it, it just kind of depends. Um, if somebody is buying land, um, mm -hmm. regular land in the um, those areas, are they going? Are they looking at conventional land to yeah. build on? That's yeah. normal conventional. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, yeah. That's construction of farm. Any other questions on USDA? TV land. land. Any questions? I don't have a question, but I'm working with my first USDA uh -huh. and they have stretched that out a little further. It's hard to find those homes now that's eligible. That's the challenge that we're seeing. I have found a few, but we're way out in McDonough and uh, some parts of the other side of Covington. But it stretches out a little bit further where they're not eligible anymore. Well, thank you. Thank you for that. I know I need to get an updated map. Mm -hmm. But you can't get the sense of that. Yeah. yeah. Um, down payment assistance programs. Okay. So I'm just going to, we have several. I'm just going to talk about two. One is Georgia Dream. That's, that's pretty common. Um, Georgia Dream is, is administered to the Department of Community Affairs, the Georgia State Department of Community Affairs. Um, the base loan is either FHA or conventional. They can they can you can do a conventional Georgia drink loan. Most of the time, it's hard to get it approved uh, for a conventional loan. FHA is, is, is a lot more common. Um, they get seventy five hundred dollars uh, towards down payment and closing costs. Uh, if they're police, you know, first responder, uh, educator, or healthcare worker, nurse, um, then they can get ten thousand um, dollars. There are sales price limits. Uh, there are income limits. The assistance is forgiven after five and a half years. So they can't sell or refinance um, in the first five and a half years um, before they have to pay that money back. And then um, there's 45 days. So you plan on at least 45 days from contract to closing. So 
it's not quick because we underwrite it and then the Department of Community Affairs underwrites it. We underwrite it. Come on in, town. And we underwrite it. Department of Community Affairs underwrites it. So, um, yeah. And then there's Supreme Dream. So, Supreme Dream underneath is, a, is an FHA loan. So, uh, and they get three and a half percent down payment assistance. So, if it's a $300,000 purchase price, um, that's $10,500 that they get. If it's a $400,000 purchase price, that's $14,000 14, that they get. Um, assistance is forgivable after five years, and we can close that in two weeks. So, so it so who you, insures the superintendent? Who insures it? Yeah. FHA. Oh, it's an yeah. Okay. First time homebuyers. Yeah. So it, you know, even if you're not a first time, I mean, I've done a screen dream for somebody that was moving here from um, uh, Washington State, and they had they had had some uh, credit issues and on their mortgage and whatever. Before that, they didn't own a home then, but they you know you know had owned a home in the last three years. And it's just FHA, and they didn't have a lot of money. And FHA, you know, was a good fit for them for the baseline, but they didn't have the down payment. So we went with, you know, the, the, the one Supreme Dream. Um, there's a lot more um, affidavits with Georgia Dream that they have to sign. Um, you know, and, and one of the things that the Department of Community Affairs, just an example, the Department of Community Affairs, we get there, you got to have three months of bank statements from Georgia Dream. And they'll go through them and, oh, I see $225 deposited every month. What is that? Mm -hmm. Oh, you know, that's my um, son's part time job. Oh, my 16 year old son's part time job. Okay, we got to, even though he's not on the loan, they count that as income. Right? Or, um, you know, is there, is there, um, you know, another apartment, you know, boyfriend, girlfriend, we're happy that's going to be living in the home that, oh, we got to count their income too, even though they're not on the lot. If it's with Georgia Dream. with Georgia Dream, yeah. So we get past all that with Supreme Dream. Okay. It's just, a, it's just a lot easier. Um, and you have 15 days for a contract to fill in because you write any of them. Because every, yeah, everything's done. Time. You don't have to send it. Okay. We don't have to send it out to the to the Department of Community Affairs. Okay. Cool. Gotcha. So so it's, yeah, it's it's a it's a it's a great program, and we have some others. With, you know, if you hear about Invest at Land, we do those. If you hear about um, Invest at Land is kind of weird because they they say it's got to be in Metro Atlanta, but they don't give you the geo codes for Metro Atlanta. You just have to well, is this address? The address might be in Cobb, based even though it's not in the city limits. But anyway, it's just it's you know it's, it's a lot of hidden, a lot of a lot of options for error. Um, repair escrow program. So um, cost of a home inspection five hundred to seven hundred, right? Yes. Cost of a new HVAC eighty five hundred to nine thousand, right? Cost of a loan that allows repairs to be completed after closing. Priceless. <laughs> right. So you run into an issue like that. We can do an escrow repair. We can do it from um, basically the way it works. Um, up to twenty thousand dollars can be placed in an escrow account uh, within ten to fifty days after closing. Okay. So all the work has to be done within that period of time. The loan has to be locked long enough to include that period of time. Okay, so if it's, it, you know, we're, if you think it's going to be 40 days, well, we've got to lock the loan, you know, 15 days prior to that, and that's 55, so that's a 60 day lock, and we're locking in 15 days prior to closing. So it's going to include the, the lock period. Um, cost of repairs can be financed into the loan. So if, and I just got a call about a HUD and REL, I think, two weeks ago. It's having a Heard about those in a while, but I guess they might be coming up. Um, you know, a HUD, HUD REO, there's a real estate on this, a foreclosure that HUD took over. 
um, and uh, if there's repairs that HUD requires on it, the, um, then, then those can be financed into the loan. If uh, for non HUD REOs, the costs have to be, the cost of repairs have to be funded by the buyer or the seller. So um, the cost of repairs and the, the escrow. So it can be used on conventional FHA and VA loans. The, um, uh, the cost of repairs on conventional loans, you have to have a 50%. Escrow override. So if you think the costs are going to be ten thousand dollars, you got to put fifteen thousand dollars in the escrow account. Mm -hmm. The seller or the, or the buyer does. The buyer, if the if the buyer does it, he gets that money back. If the seller does it, he gets that money back. Um, with FHA, it's ten percent. Uh, if the seller puts that in, then that ten percent uh, uh, is goes to, and, and they don't use that extra ten percent, then it goes, it reduces the loan amount. Um, if the buyer does, then it comes back to the buyer. And VA works the same way. So that's a, that's a good, you know, you're getting into one of those situations. That's a good, it's a lot easier than a two of you know, renovation loan or what have you. So renovation loans. Um, Yeah, full 203K, the subject is actually, I think I said it's up to 150,000 in structural repairs. Um, uh, streamlined 203K is up to 35,000. And then uh, conventional home style uh, repairs are, uh, so if the home is, that's at 50%, I think they're increasing it to 75%. If the home, say the home appraises to make the math easy, say the appraises after repairs for um, 300,000. You know, 150 of that to go towards um, uh, uh, repairs. Yeah. Um, you all have seen that's kind of the steps of the process. Does anybody have questions on this? Our supreme assurance. So, you know, we underwrite ahead of time. So, before your client goes out looking for homes, we provide zero days on the financing contingency. Uh, we have a supreme lock and look, so if they know they're going to close in the next 60 days, they are like, no, we're going to find a home in the next 60 days. We can go ahead and lock them in in today's rates, and then they get that interest rate when they do find a home. Um, the bread, the bread lot is going to expire after 60 days. Um, they can also do it for 90 days. Of course, 90 days is going to be a higher rate than a 60 day loan. Mm -hmm. And then, of course, supreme customer service. Um, so let's talk real quickly about rates. So Federal Reserve is going to raise rates. Um, they think, um, you know, the 30, I saw some statistic this morning, 31% of those, you know, of uh, money managers survey think that there's, they're going to raise it a, a full percentage point. That means that 69% um, say it's going to be three quarters of a point, right? Um, so it really just depends. We, we don't know how, how they're going to, um, uh, what they're going to do in terms of, of raising and raise. So it'll probably be three quarters to one percentage point. The mortgage market already has that built in. So that doesn't affect mortgage rates. Like, okay, the Federal Reserve raises rates a percent. The mortgage rates go up a percent? No. The, 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 the mortgage market says, okay, because those are bonds traded, mm -hmm. right? And those, they're like, okay, if the Federal Reserve raises rates a percent or three quarters of a percent, we're, we're trading bonds now, which determines what rates are ahead of time. Now, if new news comes out, like, oh, inflation is, you know, like we did last week, inflation is 9.1%. Well, we uh, everybody was expecting 8.8%. .8%. That caused rates to go up. Producer price index was a lot higher than. Um, than they were really expected. So that caused rates to go up. So it's, it's, it's that fear of inflation. It's not necessarily, and of course, the Federal Reserve, if they raise rates a percent, mortgage rates might go down because depending on what their comments are, thinking that, okay, well, they probably won't raise rates. This is really going to quell inflation. And so mortgage rates might come down. And I've, I've seen that happen before. Um, but the Fed raises rates and then mortgage rates come down in anticipation of rates in general and inflation coming down. Um, arms, so adjustable rate mortgages, there's five, seven, and 10-year arms. Those are great 
you get a fixed rate for five years, a fixed rate for seven years, a fixed rate for 10 years. And, and maybe you're going to be in your home for, um, yeah, and it's a 30 year amortization. So it is, you're paying down the principal every month, but you maybe you're going to be in the home for, um, you know, 10 years, maybe 12 years, maybe 15 years, but you're thinking, you know what, in seven years, we're going to have enough equity. I'm probably going to refinance anyway. Mm -hmm. So maybe you look at a seven year arm. Yeah, it makes it a lot more affordable for you. Uh, if you know you're going, there's a good chance you're going to move in the next ten years to it. Ten, and you want the security of a fixed rate, do a ten year arm. It's still a thirty year amortization. It's still, you know, um, but you're going to save. A ten year arm is going to be depending on the day anywhere from a quarter to half a percent lower than the thirty year fixed rate. A seven year arm is going to be, you know, um, uh, three eighths to, to to six eighths percent lower than a thirty year fixed rate. Depending on the game, so those are those are those are good viable options. You can refinance any time within before you hit the. Yeah, you can refinance any time. You know, it's just whether you want to. You know, I mean, if you got a three percent interest rate, even after the you don't have to refinance. So say it adjusts and the rate goes down, right? You're like, okay, this is great, right? So every time it goes up, the the, the interest rates are adjusted. The adjustable rate is going up uh, the following month. Or? Well, a HELOC works that way. A home equity line of credit works that way, but um, uh, the way uh, arms work, um, typically there are five, six, seven, six, and ten and six arms. So that means that they're going to go up or down every six months. They can only change by one percentage point. Okay. okay so mm -hmm. the first change after the five years, seven years, or ten years can be five percent. So they can go up or down five percent. And then every six months after that, one percent, and then uh, over the life of a loan, the maximum rate can change is five percent. Do you have any rates that are based off the LIBOR? Uh, we used to. Now that the <coughs> arm rates are based off the CMT, it's just a different index. It's just, yeah, and I don't, I'm not smart enough to know why. <laughs> why they changed it? Um, interest only used to those used to be big. Um, you know. And we, they've kind of come back. We've got interest only arms. We've got interest only, uh, interest only fixed rate product. Um, it's analyzed. Uh, you know, this, the loan is scrutinized a lot more. This that's not a good loan for a first time home buyer, right? Mm -hmm. um, it's a great loan for somebody that just wants a, a low payment, um, and uh, you know, and they're going to they're putting a bunch of money down anyway. You know, it's not it's not a good loan for somebody putting five percent down um, and, and trying to get by. Um, and then reverse mortgages. So um, basically, the way a reverse mortgage works is that you start off. You know, um, maybe the home is worth six hundred thousand, and so they give a loan for 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 three hundred thousand. And then as time, and, but the people don't have to make any, any payments on it. So over time interest builds up, that loan amount increases, right? And you, instead of paying it down, that loan amount increases. And so, you know, after um, 20 years, maybe it was $450,000 now it was still owed. But instead of 600,000, maybe the home is now worth 700,000, right? So um, it's just, it's really just, you know, in terms of if you're gonna sell that as a listing, um, just get the payoff and, you know, and figure out the equity. Um, you got to make sure you know it's been if it, it's been appropriated correctly and all that. Yeah. So, any other questions? No. Uh, future training classes, winning with FHA and VA. I think we're going to do that on the twenty eighth. And. Uh, renovation loans, we need to have a uh, class on that. We have a uh, credit CD class, appraisal CD class. We got that coming up in a second. Uh, one on condos. And you shouldn't miss that condo class because I'm not going to miss it again. It is so, so good. And the, the, the lady we have training at is actually, she was a trainer with Paula Wellington or Lisa Spencer. Is that her name? Yeah, and she. Um, and she's fantastic. She's a great instructor. Um, uh, she's, she was a team leader. 
um, down in Florida. She, you know, she, she's, she's great. She, she's really impressive. She's working with us. Now, who's going to do the holding of first time homebuyer seminar? Who's going to be? Who, who, who's the who, instructor? Who, who's the instructor? Yeah. So we're still putting together that class. Okay. Because there's some fantastic agents here who does that at a high level. That's great. Mm -hmm. we'll, get, we'll, get, we'll, get, we'll get with you on that. Okay. All right. Stop I guess share. that's it. Stop Thank, you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Stop Thank you. And everybody in TV land, there's there's lunch out here. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks, Steph. Thank you, Steph. We send you some events. Brenda, thank you for your input. Please do. Yes, thank text, you. Text, text me the lunch. Thanks, guys. Thank you. Thank you, Jeff. Was this good for you, Mother? Yeah, I learned some more.